Hey there, Vanessa, and welcome to the Cult of Cinema. I am Aaron, and tonight we're talking Mon Macabre. In just three days from now, Mon Macabre is having a big unveiling and a big sale. Hopefully you guys can hear me okay, because I'm still trying to figure out this whole how to maneuver without my tripod. That's a consistent issue. Thursday, new tripod coming, fingers crossed. But anyway, so who here is excited about the upcoming Mon Macabre announcements and sale? Hey, Griff, welcome, man. Hey there, Italian Dan. Happy Monday. Well, I'm not sure if Mondays are a happy day, but we'll go with Monday being a happy day. Hey, the rich. So what I'm doing right now, just so you know, is I'm op opening this up so I can actually see uh, your guys' messages. Do you have a want list already? So I'm not going to help your want list because I've got, I've got like a modest like Mono Cobra collection, which I will be going through and give you some suggestions on some stuff to check out. Uh, Mono Macabre did not start out as a movie company, actually. Uh, that kind of came later. See, Mono Macabre started as a book. The guy that, uh, that would go on to do Mono Macabre wrote a book called Mon Macabre about, well, exactly what you think, about like weird different international films. And when he was doing that book, he found that it was kind of hard to actually find the films that he wanted to write about. And hey there, Dave, it let him know that there was a space in the market that wasn't being fulfilled. And he already had the knowledge going in from writing the book, and he definitely had the newer some of the uh, the prints and some of the s sources were. You had to cite all of that stuff. Uh, again, the whole writing thing. Uh, so uh, he decided that if nobody else, hey there, Alan, was going to be doing like these weird, different, like, hey, Mike, the international films, uh, then he would go out and do it himself. There was no other company that was looking into that stuff. This was long before like Vinegar Cinema 7 were like putting out like Italian stuff and and Polynesian films and like stuff like that. Uh, there was pretty Mon Macabre was the go to when it came to this crazy, wild, wacky world of like world cinema and world genre cinema. That stuff that a lot of companies at the time thought was kind of risky and kind of a, a weird and unusual thing to do. But with the help of some overly read cases, some excellent choices in uh, films and some insanely crazy prima who hopefully you guys know if you're looking at Monty Macabre. Hey, heroic man. Welcome. 23 titles. That is epic. I want to see that video, man. You know, I'll be watching that video. I'm so bummed. I missed your live video. I, I hate when I miss the live video, especially with you guys. You guys, because you guys kind of rock it. Hope you guys liked my video last night, man. It didn't seem too sappy or sub or at the end, but uh, it's kind of me. The fan and their fan and uh, inheritors. I don't have the, the inheritors yet. Uh, I got a few here, and the thing is, my better half is like for those that don't know, my better half is from Morocco, and like uh, French cinema and foreign cinema was something that she was kind of really into, especially the geekier, crazier, the nuttier, the better. Uh, so. When we looked at Mount Macabre, we looked at it as a couple. And the very first year that I moved here to uh, to Nova Scotia from Newfoundland, uh, I had a Mount Macabre Christmas. Hey there, Jason. <laughs> now, have you not got any Mount Macabre? Oh, Vanessa, welcome to the world. Combination of titles that are out of print that you wish you'd upgrade. Well, sometimes the thing happens like you know, rights issues, and especially with smaller companies, they may not get the rights to, like, a title for as long as they would like. So they try to really kind of get it and milk it there. Hey, there's Sumo. As, as, you know, milk it in a good way, as much as, as they can. So, by the way, I had to wear a shirt down here the, tonight because, uh, well, it's really chilly. And, uh, well, this is my artsy look. I did go to art school after all. But this is, today it's 
Yep. The Breakfast Club. All right, so we can dive right into this, or we can talk a bit more about what you think, like what you want to talk about. Well, tell you what, let's dive into this here. This way you'll get a, an idea. Uh, I'm just going to play. <laughs> there we go. I used to have like suspenders. <laughs> I'm not even joking, Vanessa. I was, I was a journalism student, and uh, right after I out of high school, I did journalism. And right after that, as I was finishing up journalism, I was into... Uh, I was in, I was actually like doing up like a an article, and I my my a teacher for my roommate came in because he was missing on journalism classes. Oh, sorry, he was missing on art classes, and I was like kind of like sketching like the Starkman picture, and because uh, I used to sketch when I uh, did a when I when I wrote, and he saw it and he told me to go into to art class and that was a huge mistake because i am not somebody that was going to be doing artsy stuff but uh there you go another of the untold stories of aaron okay your night is a thousand desires satanic pa pa pandemonium right on uh beast and the magic sword hell yeah you need to watch beast again you kind of be bored with beast and ascot i'll be all like like Fred Jones from like Scooby Doo. One on one films, black label movies with your girlfriend? Fist bump, George. You do that. That's cool, man. A scaly cap. Okay, let's dive. Let's dive right in. To and I, I they aren't in particular order, but I'll tell you like about them we'll talk about some of these. Some of these in particular I really want to talk about. And the first one, it's a great start to Mon Macabre. Yeah, heroic. There, Mon Macabre is having a sale on October the 29th. And at that time, they will be doing a... Uh, they'll have three new limited edition titles, two of which have been announced. One which hasn't. That uh, That's going to happen on October 29th, and I'll be here for it. Mon Macabre Restaurant. The taste of the world. Flavors of the world. All right. So let's start with the first Mon Macabre one and th that I got. And that was The Living Corpse. Any ideas? I will get to that, actually. Uh, otherwise known as Dracula in Pakistan. So this is... It's what you think it is, actually. Sort of. If you're thinking this is a Pakistani Dracula film that is heavily influenced by by Hammer, uh, then yeah, that's exactly what what you're what you're gonna get. This is a this is a a direct, oh Vanessa, you like Dracula? This is actually pretty cool. There's only one actual kind of musical number in it because you know all the all these uh, films have at least South Asian horror films have at least one musical number because well, let's all dance. But it's actually creepy in parts. There's actually some really good imagery in this in this one here. And I definitely recommend checking it out. I know, Mike, you might be a bit disappointed. Because you know what? Wait, there might be two. I think there's a beach one. But nothing that takes away from the actual creepiness of it. Now, one thing you should know about Mon Macabre is even when it's DVDs like this. And by the way, they do some great prints on DVDs. Uh, I don't know if this one's sold out. Uh, if it's not, Death Bomb. Grab it. I mean that with all sincerity. Vanessa, for you too, because I know the type you like. They don't just... So, so let's just say you're going in. You've never watched uh, one of these films before. You've never watched a South uh, Asian film. Uh, you're kind of wondering what, you know, what you're getting, getting into. You got the film that you're going to get kind of the experience there with the film. But they don't stop at that. Nope. Uh, they also have like newly filmed interviews with the cast and crew. And a documentary here. On South Asian horror, so I think it's part of the Eroticil series that was done. Erotic, yeah, Eroticil series, right? That was done Erotica. Um, now it's direct, like dancing on the beach. Yeah, so you're gonna get a lot of information about like South Asian horror as well. So basically, this is here. Th this is your, this is your gateway. Uh, there's an Andrew Kamachan on here. I'll get it out one second. Just give me a second or two. The actual trailer, exclusive gallery of rare steals and posters. Lost song sequence. Hey there, Penga. 
optional subtitles. And one of the greatest things of all time that if you've never gotten Mon Macabre release and you've never looked at Mon Macabre, there is the Mon Macabre preview. And it's not like any other preview. One, Mon Macabre has this amazingly hypnotically fantastic music that plays before they're this big, like, kind of reel of like different scenes from different films. You can't watch this Mon Macabre kind of like, like trailer thing without wanting to immediately buy some Mon Macabre. It's pretty addictive. So the Living Corpse, and do these have numbers? They do, I think, too. So this would be number three. So 103. The Living Corpse. It is pretty stacked with special features. Like, like even their DVDs. Like, you think that maybe, like, the Blu-rays, they'd be, you know, there'd be less on, the DVDs have less on it because it's a DVD. But no, you got a documentary on Asian horror, audio commentaries, a whole bunch of stuff. See, Wilf, this is one of my favorite releases. You've got to rewatch this one. From creepy and kind of classic to they made this. Because Mondo Macabre will definitely be a company that will give you movies that you'll enjoy the hell out of. But you'll also be saying, somebody thought this up and greenlit it. And I'm happy about that. Uh, and that's definitely what the next one, which is very, very uh, slightly deceiving in the way it is. And that is Lady Terminator. So I really dig Lady Terminator. But if you're thinking that this is just maybe a Terminator knockoff, uh, yeah, no. <laughs> it's kind of nuts and kind of fun so are you ready because i'm going to read you like a mini description for lady terminator and we'll see if that's this is what you what you thought it was going to be because i know what you're thinking you're thinking a cyborg cybernetic girl maybe so much from the future with the gun that's what you're thinking right that's that that's what you initially think when you see the word lady terminator do you think this Get ready for a wild ride. A sexy, rapacious Asian goddess known as the Queen of the South Sea possesses the body of a young female skin diver armed with an AK-47 and an endless supply of bullets. The murderous Lady Terminator takes to the streets on a re revenge-filled rampage. It's like Kill Bill, but with oodles of sex. This combination of Asian black magic and western style shoot-up is one of the key cult movies of the 1980s. Even the jaded patrons of 42nd Street were shocked to see how the lustful Lady T dispatched her male victims. I won't spoil that for you, by the way, because <laughs> it's kind of nuts. Uh, but it is a super fun. And it's one that uh, you kind of got to check out. Aside from having like a brand new transfer on, on this one here, you get a documentary on Indonesian horror. So I love the fact that these different documentaries from different companies, from different like parts of the world on like and on different genre types so this one here has a documentary on indonesian horror production notes and filmographies alternate scenes trailer mondo macabre see vanessa i told you their dvds are stacked and you learn stuff <laughs> mystics and, we'll get the mystics and bali because you know <laughs> you know me Mystics in Bali, gotta have it. Now, now for a movie that's legit considered to be like for and, and especially among some people, uh, especially among the art art house cinema, to kind of be a classic. And uh, it is uh, insane, like it should be, and gorgeously shot, and weird. And uh, just kind of fantastic. And it is The Mansion of Madness. So this is done by the uh, same director who directed El Yucarda, which, of course, you know, it's known as a classic in an uh, inter international like genre cinema. And I will, I am not even going to try to pronounce the name because you guys know how much I suck at name pronunciation. So, uh, but this is a really 
really in, insane film. And it is based on... It's almost like... A, yeah, based on Edgar Allan Poe's story. And it's very much... When they say... Like, American Cinematique said, a phantasmagorical black comedy with equal measures of Bonal, Fellini, and Ken Russell. That's true. That's that's not hyperbole. This really is kind of like a mix mash of like Fellini and Ken Russell and Banal put together. You'll understand. I know it's really weird uh, combination to think of, but once you watch the film, you'll you'll get it. You'll you will. And it is definitely one of the most unique Edgar Allan Poe adaptions that you're ever going to see. Set in an a uh, in an asylum, uh, pretty much where. Uh, well, I won't, don't want to give anything away, but it's it's really, really well done. Again, you're going to get a documentary on the director of the film here, a new digital transfer. And in case you wondered it was just, if it was just like, you no, know, small people that on this one here, there's an interview on here with Gil, Gilmore, with Del Toro. So, because he's a big fan of this film as well. And if you've ever seen the film, then you can see that Del Toro's a big fan of this film. Uh, there's a stills gallery, text interview with the film director as well, English, Spanish language choices. So if you can actually like watch it in its original uh, language. So companies that still don't do that, do have the modern Hammer Horror releases. So I have some of them out. But this one was set out, done in 1972, and it is a visual treat uh, for sure. If you've never seen this one or Al Yucarda, both are really good choices to... Uh, pick up i would love to see El yucardo specifically get like a a blu-ray release see i love the limited hey there chris oh, we're doing mon macabre oh, and for those if i forgot to mention at the beginning of it i'm starting a new series on this channel which is a spotlight series uh and basically what i'll be doing is i'll be spotlighting different movie companies um going through like uh through really either all releases or key releases. I uh, talk about the company themselves and uh, what I think that they bring to the table, and a little bit of history about the companies too, like I did at the beginning of this video here. And I'm starting it tonight with the Mon Macabre Spotlight. Mon Macabre Sale, October 29th. So hopefully, it's it's a new idea that I thought up just recently, and I hope you guys like it. And the next one, well, the next one was so influential that Quentin Tarantino, well, he, uh, he, he made a character based on the name of this film from, uh, from Dust to Dawn. And that is Santonio, Santonico Pandemonium, of course, which is. Now, this is a non-splitation. And uh, on this one here, we get a, uh, a new anamorphic transfer interview with the writer, co-director of the film, feature it on Nunsplitation film. So if you've never seen a Nunsplitation film before, here's a good way to start. Uh, an extensive extensive background notes, image gallery, optional subtitles, Mon Macabre preview, which, by the way, is really awesome. I'll watch it every time. No, I've seen it so many times, and I'll watch it every time. It starts with that, that whole, like, da 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 Well, this is actually a good. Is this is one of the you know this is one of the granddaddies of Santonic. Uh, this one is on Blu-ray right now, I think. Um, a couple of these here are, and I would recommend it. I would recommend the Blu-ray version, though. If you don't know, and it's something that you that you're just getting into, you're gonna be the DVDs for cheap, so. And if you thought, well, that stuff may be a little bit of too bit out of the park, maybe a little bit too strange. Don't open until Christmas on Blu-ray. I don't expect that one this year, but I expect that one in the future. Really good release, by the way. Your your girlfriend, Italian Dan, is a keeper. I'm telling you that right now. She knew that re Tarantino reference. She's a keeper. And you want some like action stuff? Well, they got the action stuff too. Actually, they have a double feature action, a Dick Randall collection. We'll get to Mystics and Bali, don't worry. Uh, but right now, this is for your height only. 
with, of course, Wing Wing, the uh, classic. And Challenge of the Tiger with Bruce Lee with Winnie. Just in case you get confused. Trust me, you won't. <laughs> and I think oh, Richard Harrison. Pretty sure it's Richard Harrison this one as well. I'll definitely check that right later on tonight, man. But this is a fun double feature. Now, this one, feature-wise, not a lot because basically it's just focused on the uh, on the films themselves. Did you get, like, trailers and, like, some background information type stuff? It's Rio Bruce Lee. Uh, Wing Wang is it's really cool in this. So, Wing Wang is, like, a, a, a Filipino, like, actor. And he's around two and a half feet tall. But don't think that, you know, he, he packs a punch. He's a spy. He's, he's like James Bond. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, it, he's kind of like James Bond. And you've probably seen him in, well, what was that again? On Dr. Moreau, right? Yeah. So if you were thinking... You needed a film about, well, martial arts and maybe some naked tennis and one with a two and a half foot tall secret agent. Well, so your, your dreams, they've come true. Okay. It's a little person with, with lethal edge. There we go. How do we do that again? All right. Okay, so. A double disc one. This one is going into print. They announced it. Uh, I thought it was already in print, but they found some more copies of it, I guess. They're, but the last few copies are going to be during the sale. Uh, so it's a double disc special edition. And if you haven't checked it out, it is insane. And it's insane in a good way. I'm saying this about a lot of these films. But these are all entertaining films. These are all fun films. And, and we started with Virgins from Hell. And this is an Indian, I think it's Indonesian, right? Because I know it's Jakarta. This is Jakarta, right? Yeah. And 1987 Indonesian action film. Uh, that is really fun, actually. Like, like a ton. Have, has anybody seen this? Because if you haven't seen this, you really need to see this. It's a two disc set, by the way. So. You get the Virgins from Hell disc, and you also get Destination Jakarta. So what is Destination of Jakarta? Well, it's a, it's a trailer tape, actually. It's a 70-minute trailer tape um, of uh, like of trailers from the company Jakarta that, that, that put it Virgins from Hell. And, oh, Jason, you're going to get a kick out of this one. This is really cool and fun and insane. Uh, there's a... Uh, there's a girl like wanting revenge for her, her family. There's a guy with a with kind of like an amorous formula. It it goes all over the place, but you're never bored. Actually, I think this one was supposed to be out of print Griffa, that's what I'd heard. But they said during their uh basically during during one of their announcements recently that they had some copies of this. So definitely Grab this. What's my favorite DVD out of the Mondo? Uh, I'm not quite sure yet. Let's go through them all. And then by the, when I, by the time I finish, I'll be able to answer that question. It may not be what you think, though. The very first one I picked up. Uh, the the one that, uh, that got me into Mondo Macabre in the first place is uh, this one right here. And... Uh, it's actually a French film. Hey there. <laughs> and 
and it's Don't Deliver Us From Evil. So this film was, well, controversial in the day and banned for blasphemy. Never before released in the U.S. What region is this one? Most of their stuff, like this one is all region, actually. Most of their stuff is all region, George. Uh, I have to go back and look through, but like some of them are like, they say NTSC, but if you look here, they're actually that really nice all region, all release. Now, this is actually a pretty cool one. I, I re obviously, I like this because it got me into collecting from the company. Uh, again, uh, the uh, the interview of the director, the interview of the stars of the film, a special feature called Hellish Creatures, um, a new transfer, and that fantastic Mon Macabre preview. Oh, he left Penga. Well, this is a neat one. It's it's different, and I like that. Basically, there's these two. Yes, you do, Chris. <laughs> Look, can you? How can you not get this? Here, let's. I can see what they did thing. We renounce forever Christ and his, all his works. We dedicate ourselves to Satan. We beseech thee, Satan, our Lord and Master. Master. Oh, those publishing people were, those PR people were so good for, <laughs> for, for that type of stuff. Um, but anyway, uh, two young comic girls become friends and decide to spend the summer together wherever their innocent bicycle ride walks into the countryside. Soon developed a much sinister side. Influenced by the readings of forbidden books, they decide to explore the world of perversion and cruelty. They find a victim and use their innocent exterior to seduce and destroy him. Once they've stepped over the line, they find it impossible to stop and soon are contemplating the ultimate evil act. Usually controversial, the film is banned for blasphemy. So there you go. If that doesn't sell you on it, I don't know what does because it's, it's, a, it's a cool little film. Bit of a shocking ending, too. Not going to lie there, but I really did enjoy it. Is there any film that I would say it's similar to? That's a good question. I really don't know. Like, I'm sure there is. I'm sure, like, I'm just not thinking of it. But, uh... I, initially, I'd say Heavenly Creatures, because, you know, the whole two, two people, hey there, Dagger, doing, like, the whole, uh, like, but this goes way farther than heavenly creatures. Uh, but, uh, are you ready? Are you sure you're ready for this awesomeness? Because these, I'm not sure if these are in print or not. If these are, I definitely say grab these. But first, I have to ask you are you ready to see amazingly awesome stuff? Because then you are ready to enter the world of Barry Prima and the Devil's Sword. I think that's the Crocodile Queen on the, on the cover. These are, I'm not going to lie, they're, they're kind of nuts, but I, I, I super love them. Uh, the, it's a character, like it's, a, it's actually like a comic book character that he, that he plays, and just like, Hey there, William. Uh, super crazy stuff happens in it. You know, things like where he's fighting somebody and he and his foot detaches from his body and kicks somebody in the face. So, if that interests you at all, then you're 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 ready for this. So basically, I think this one starts out with this crocodile queen who wants to who wants to grab like this this guy who's just got who's just getting married or just got married. So she has her uh, her minions go and grab him, and Barry Prima, of course, being the action hero that he is, with re removable limbs, uh, goes to uh, to take on the Crocodile Queen. Uh, we get an interview with Barry Prima on here, a brand new uh, OCN, uh, OCN transfer, Heavenly Swords, a history of the of the sword. So there you go, something different on here, and Mondo Macabre previews because I love that, and because. I want to, I want to get you into this more. Let's read it. Somewhere in time, in a land far away, an ancient wizard forged a deadly sword from the hot metal of a fallen meteorite. 
The sword is filled with magical energy. Whoever controls it will have ultimate powers on Earth. Deep under the sea in her palace of crystal lives the sexually insatiable crocodile queen. She uses her body to enslave men to her will. All who enjoy her favors become mutant warriors and a zombie army. The queen wants the power of the deadly sword and traps the one man she thinks can bring it to her. The devil's sword is one of the triumphs of Indonesian fantasy cinema, packed with jaw-dropping scenes of incredible wildness. It's the closest thing to a legal hallucinogen ever invented. This is a trip that you want to take again and again. Best of the Hammer Currency in Film Trilogy. Uh, good question. I'm thinking. Vampire Lovers, I guess. I had to come to it. It was going to happen eventually. Is there anybody here that has not heard of Mystics and Ballads? Like in all seriousness. This is definitely one of the most, you know, seen like YouTube clips, memes. Um, ah, Dustin. This is insane. I'm, I'm not even joking. It's the same, but it's fun. All right, Chris, <laughs> Dustin, you're in for a treat. So... Basically, uh, tells the story of a young American woman who goes to Asia in search of the secrets of ancient magic. One night in the forest, she encounters a female member of the terrifying cult of Liak. She agrees to come to Liak's site, but begins to indulge in many strange and savage rites. Now, that doesn't tell you anything. What What's going to tell you stuff is basically, in the middle of the night, what happens is she's been possessed. So, her head and her Guts, I guess we'll call them, innards, fly around and she kind of becomes, her head and her insides become a flying vampire. I, 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 I couldn't make that up. It's super insane. <laughs> yeah. Trust me, it's something you that you, you kind of got to look up. Thank you, Andy. Uh, I, I I love cinema. It's kind of like my it's my secret mistress. Uh, but this is a cool one. There's like uh, not a lot of features on here, but it's, you don't care because this is one of these like insane movies. Just look at the look at these things. How can you not grab that, <laughs> hey, Andy? Mystics and Bally is just an insane film uh, that most people have seen like clips of, but they may not know what it is. But trust me, look it up afterwards. You don't have to leave my video now, but look it up at look up Mystics and Bally. Just like write, write it in there. Don't like watch the movie on YouTube or anything like that. Uh, the Werepick Transformation. <laughs> okay, yeah. There, there's there's just things in it that you're just like you're it. You will be dumbfounded in in the best possible way. Great movie to watch with friends, by the way. Don't tell them what they're watching before. Before you just say, "Let's watch this movie," and they'll be like, "If they, if if you're like, if your friends are like my friends, they'll be like, what are we watching?'" They'll be suspicious, but maybe they're not, and you can get them with Mystics and Valley. Cut a pen pentagon, Tristan Vampire and their folklore. Ooh, nice. Coming with the knowledge, Craig. I like that. Did you think we were read of, read of Barry Prima? Not yet. Unfortunately, only two Barry Prima films, and there's a lot of them, uh, with the with the Jacka character, were put out by Mondo Macabre. It might be on. A, I give him a shot on Amazon. Just look up Mondo Macabre. Trust me, you know this stuff when you see it. But this is the initial one, I think, The Warrior. I think this one came before uh, The Devil's Sword. Or no, it's after. The Action Heroes Back, so probably it's after, right? 
But there's a bunch of these. Uh, unfortunately, they only have two of them. But I'm pretty sure this is the one where he's, he splits his body parts off from himself. These, these, these are, like I said, they're fun, insane films. Plays Jack Asimbo. A kind of Robin Hood figure who possesses mystical powers as a figurehead for his country's rebellion against oppressive invaders. Jack Asimbo is captured, tortured, and left for dead, but he returns, even more powerful than before. Yes, he can cut off his limbs. He'll come back. He'll get better. He's got a good health plan. Uh, the invaders resurrect an evil wizard and set him against Jack Asimbo in a fierce fight to the death. Packed with jaw-dropping action scenes. Yes, they are. <laughs> and astonishing special effects. The Warriors the Ultimate Cult Classic. First time release uncut was right here. From Mono Macabre. Definitely worth checking out. And interview with the producer, with the writer. Um, need stuff on here. The only one you have is like, a gem. I gotta get Gemini actually. Is that a good one? <clears throat> okay, so this <laughs> Video Search Mammoth without the blue light. Yeah, yeah, I get that actually. Ever miss those days of Video Search Mammy trying to get that twenty five dollar <laughs> movie to come in and hope like it's not a third or fourth generation copy? Who's the monks? That says not regrown their limbs. Well of course, doing that all the time, man. Don't judge me on this one. Okay, you can judge me. <laughs> Sins of Sister Lucia. So it is part of the Nakatsu erotica cinema series. Now, you get a lot of Nakatsu erotica basically on, uh, on I think Synapse has like a whole bunch, like a whole offshoot of, of Nakatsu. But this is uh, one that was put out by Mano Macabre. We get an exclusive documentary on Japanese cinema. Introduction by film historian Jasper Sharp. This was out of print. If you ever get a chance to get it, it's actually a cool one. And as you know, Jasper, if you want, if you get a lot of, Amy's not here tonight, but if he was, he'd appreciate this. Uh, Jasper Sharp was on like the Ring. If you got the Ring trilogy, remember the Arrow box set. Jasper Sharp was on anything that Arrow puts out. That's like, that has to do with Asian cinema. It's got Jasper Sharp on it. So he's kind of the, the go-to guy. Kind of like Tim Lucas is the go-to guy to like Mario Baba. Jasper Sharp is a go-to guy when it comes to Asian cinema. Um, when they're when you're getting a release, so you, the fact that Jasper Sharp was on it is kind of like a, it's a thumb of approval. I love the fact that they're so, like. Like the discs are so just like uniform. Some people don't. I uh, it's something that I actually really enjoy about it. <laughs> I think this is the one I watched recently. Yeah, I like this one a lot. Jess Franco. You're going to like this, Jason. Uh, it's a Jess Franco release. And it is Sinner, the secret diary of a nymphomaniac. I, I found like them really great to do with Warlock. Uh, when the first year when, when they had their big sale, um, remember uh, you know the guy that owns it got, got sick? He got really like hit sick with the flu. So like he actually contacted me personally to let me know that my movies are going to be like a bit a week late because uh because he wasn't feeling well uh which i thought was really cool especially with certain companies i'm not going which i won't name that aren't very good at letting company people know that things are going to be gonna get nifty i got to get the i've got the first one the dollars ones but i don't have all the three of them on like uh with this commentary so this one again like an interview with film uh, introduction with stephen thrower on here interview with gerard Cocaine. Like I said, I suck at like. Uh, but this actually is a really neat one, and the storyline behind it is actually pretty cool as well. So, pretty simple. It, uh, and you know what? It's got Howard Vernon, but uh, I don't think this one, if I remember correctly, this one, the one doesn't have, have like uh, have Tina Elena Romana, which is really surprising. Um, I knew you. I knew you know this one, Jason. But it's. It's dark. I mean, like, uh, this girl comes to a big city in search of fun and excitement. And, uh, but, yeah, we, I don't want to give it away. Like, it's not really giving it away because it's at the beginning of the film, something happens. 
and then we flash back to s and it's basically finding out what caused that something to happen to happen and you know I can give it away I guess the, she's she dies she's dead at the beginning of the film <laughs> but we don't know why really we just know it's tragically she's dead but we we do find out and you know what's actually a really good a kind of like emotionally resonant Jess Franco film uh, who would have thought huh I do need Lorna the Exorcist I do not have that one yet don't open till Christmas so just read that there underneath it from the producers of pieces that should tell you enough that should tell you that you need it right there you shouldn't have to hear anything else about this film but I will tell you this is not a killer Santa Claus this is the guy that kills people that are dressed Santa Claus among other people there's a pretty ouch moment in this <laughs> in this film if you know what I'm talking about so and it is directed by Edmund Curdum of and if that name sounds really familiar to you maybe during the Severn sale you uh, you picked up absurd because I mentioned it to you I hope you did it's a really cool film uh, so Edmund Padum is in well absurd and uh, he's, uh, he's the priest character in that he's in a lot of films actually he's also one of the stars of the film yeah he, he we got Edmund Perdom, Alan Lake Carolyn Monroe yes that Carolyn Monroe so you're gonna get some sexy Carolyn Monroe-ness in this one here which who can go wrong with that who can go wrong with sexy Carol Monroe is there an unsexy Carol Monroe I don't think there is but anyway plot wise what's this one it's Christmas time in London the season of goodwill to all men a time for celebration a time for family a time for presence this this year it's also the time for a mass maniac to be let loose on the streets his attendant victims are chosen at random but they all have one thing in common they are dressed in the flowing white beard and bright red robes of Santa Claus. Mikhailer selects different methods to fulfill his grisly tasks. One Santa has his throat cut. Another is axed to death. A third is held face down in a red hot brazier. And a fourth is castrated and left to bleed to death. The police are baffled as this heroic death toll rises. Fourteen corpses, only three killing days left until Christmas. Aside from like having a documentary about Dick Randall, which I do recommend you check out, this one here has an actually has a 52-minute making of documentary on here, and it's really cool. Don't open till Christmas is one that I recommend picking up, and uh, let's see. Could you not watch it till Christmas? Would you leave this as a Christmas Eve movie? Or would you have to watch the Killer Santa slasher film right away? Chris, Chris, if you're still there, man, don't open till Christmas. But buy before. Do I have the baby? I don't have the baby on Blu-ray, but I really love that film. It's got a great, insane twist of an ending that uh, that you don't you kind of don't see coming. Uh, and. Uh, I uh, I dug it. I really dug the baby. Arrow put that out. It's one that I that I do have to pick up. So, good choice, by the way. You got good taste. And this one I recently watched. Actually, as in like in the last week or so. How to Seduce a Virgin, another Jess Franco film. And uh, by the way. A great one. Uh, Lynn Romay actually has a smaller role in this. She doesn't star in it. Alice Arno is really kind of like the uh, the star of this one. But it's really good. And basically, it's about this uh, this countess who uh, she's at the beginning of the film. She gets out of an uh, she gets out of an asylum, and she meets up with her with her husband, who uh, basically 
you find out really quickly that they're very sadistic. They're, uh, the, you know, they're, they're sadomasochists and they, they like to corrupt. That's, that's kind of what they do. But their corruption never just ends with just corruption. It ends with the utter destruction of the person in a, in a certain like specific way. And they notice that they're, the, the husband has noticed, well, she's been gone, that they've gotten a new neighbor and that neighbor has a young daughter. A, uh, a daughter that they plan on uh, pretty much uh, like corrupting and destroying. But there's a bit of a twist. And this this is an excellent film. It was part of a triple feature. I think Countess, Countess Perverse, which is I think it's out of print right now, was one of the three. It was like Hatsusa Virgin, uh, Sinner, and Countess Perverse. I think those were the three. I almost picked it up once, actually. Kind of similar, but a little bit different. Uh, different enough, definitely. Uh, if you've never checked it out, though, uh, I definitely recommend it. it. It's definitely grown uh, in my... Uh, in my list of Franco films that, that I really enjoy. It's something that I watched recently and I can honestly say I'm probably going to watch it again in the near future. I just really liked it. Greek cinema. Excellent. Greek did jallos. Well, sort of jallos. My thoughts on Daughters of Darkness coming out on 4K. It's too expensive for me, unfortunately, right now. But I really, really want it. And I that might be something that I might look at asking my mom for for Christmas because it's it's such a sexy release. It really is. It's a sexy beast for release. And I love the film, too. So, But are you ready for some, like, the Greek Collection Volume 1? The war movie that I was showing you. Oh, Barry Prima. Yeah, they put out two Barry Prima films. The Warrior and uh, they put out the, uh, the Devil's Sword as well. So those two are actually pretty pretty cool. <laughs> if that's what you wanted. So Tango of Perversion. This has got a a documentary, a really good documentary on Greek cult cinema. Reminds you of body parts? A little different than body parts. This is a little bit more insane, actually. I know I know what you're thinking, but it is a little bit more insane. How do I explain uh tangle perversion? Yeah, let's 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 just read the the back of this one, because it's really good. I really like it. But it, you okay. We'll, we'll we'll do it that way. That's the easiest way to do this. Uh, the Tango Club's a favorite hangout for a group of swingers who live for nothing but pleasure. Rosita, a beautiful lesbian, seduces Joanna by giving her dope. Stathis, Joanna, Joanna's sleazy boyfriend, catches the two girls in bed together and takes his brutal revenge on them, ending in Rosita's death. All this happens in the house of. Shaquem, a rich, I'm pronouncing this totally wrong, the way, playboy who gets his kicks by secretly filming status with girls from the tango club, believing that he's impotent until, uh, I can't get into it, but let me just say uh, this right now. Uh, it's an unusual film, and I really dug Anybody see Tango Perversion? I gotta ask. I, I do have to ask this. Has anybody seen Tango Perversion? Nobody? You kind of got to see this film. It... Yeah, Jason, you know what I'm talking about? The dude that's the hero of the film, like, not normally, is the guy that you think, oh, this is this is a weird guy. This guy is the ki is going to be the killer. And no, he's, he's, he's the hero of the film. And, Oh my God! You, you, I, I I have nothing to say but watch Tango Perversion. I don't want to give anything away. Uh, 
you will be surprised. Not, not even joking about this. You're going to be surprised. You're going to... And last but not least in the DVDs, and then I'll give you my favorite of these, is Greek Collection Volume 2. Then I'm going to go to the Blu-rays. I've got Blu-rays, don't worry. See, so some of you guys are left early that are gone right now. You're missing it on the Blu-ray section? Yeah. Yeah, I gotta say, there's nothing here that I that I would I wouldn't watch, like several times. This is a wife killer. And again, it is an insane Jalous type film about a uh, a husband that's married to a rich older woman, and he hires somebody uh, to uh, to kill his wife, but uh, the plans go awry. Seriously, you're right. But extremely cool film. Definitely worth checking out. Look at that cute blonde there. Come on. Huh? Didn't do it for you. Like, look at that creepy face. <laughs> it is, actually. You're right. I was trying to get away from that. <laughs> H2, but you're 100% correct. Hey there, Vince. Welcome, man. Definitely kind of a cool one, Jason. I think this is one you'll like, I think. H2 is right in calling it the the type of killer that it is, because that is what it is. So I was asked at the beginning of this video to give my favorite. It's really hard. Tell you what, I'll give you my top like like the top five, like not in no particular order. Uh, Living Corpse, Virgins from Hell, Mystics and, Mystic and Bally, The Devil's Sword, and uh, How to Seduce a Virgin. We'll go with those. I like every one of these films, but that's, you know, I was asked to do the top, so I, I, keep, I keep my word. So I got a handful, literally, of Blu-rays that we'll talk about from On Macabre. So you can see they actually put out some really cool, neat, decent stuff on uh, on Blu-ray as well. So we'll do the ones that you guys are probably most familiar with first. And that would be the Paul Nashi releases. Uh, the one that was probably one of the most wanted Paul Nashi films uh, to uh, to come out, and that finally came out, is was of course uh, the uh, the beast and the magic sword. So if you've never seen this, it's actually kind of a cool release. It's uh, Paul Nashi, but he's like it's he's working with the uh, oh God. It's a Japanese company, right? I can't remember the name right now. Come on, somebody, throw me a bone here. Uh, I thought this was a really cool film. Really well done. Great in a 4K transfer on this one here. Uh, interview with Panashi, the late Panashi, with the, the small of the wolf. Introduction by Nashi himself. A uh, great little commentary by Nashi Cast, which is an underrated podcast, which you should check out, by the way. Uh, interview with author Gavin uh, Battley. Uh, and, of course, those infamous Mondo Macabre previews. And for those people that are outside of the U.S. of A. or Canada, uh, this is region-free. So you guys... Can go and pick this one up. Now the neat little thing about this is when this release came out, initially it had a red case. The limited editions always do. It had uh, a booklet. It had interior, like different art. And I think it had Jason, if I'm correct, didn't have like some postcards or something like that too. That's some like kind of lobby cards or something. Because my dad's got the limited edition. But I love this artwork. It is gorgeous, gorgeous art. And for me, you can't go wrong with the Panashi. Love Panashi stuff. The age ones from Mondo are really hard to get. Seven Wind for Satan. That's one and Sins of the Flesh. And both of those events are coming out on Blu-ray uh, for the very first time. 
on the 29th, and I will be here talking to you guys about that sale. So we will be doing a video about the Mon Macabre sale. So this is this spotlight is a primer for the upcoming sale, and hopefully get you guys interested in some of the stuff here, and hopefully not get me too interested because it kills my wallet. Inquisition. Uh, I don't know. I think the sale's gone on for the weekend, as far as I know, but I, I'd have to check, like, uh, Ragman. Because uh, I know it starts at the 29th. Uh, I'm, it could be a week-long sale or a weekend-long sale. Uh, Warlock, do you know? You usually know the stuff. But this isn't one of these werewolf ones. This is a different one for uh, for Nashi. And I actually do like this one a lot. Uh, I think this one gets gets a bit of a bad rap, unfortunately. Be over the weekend. Okay, thanks. I knew you'd know it now. See, I know where to go. Uh, but definitely a really cool film. No one expects the Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> you can't not say that, right? You can't not say that when you when you pick up something like that. Next up is a Jallo. Actually, this one's fairly tame. Uh, tame for a Mono Macabre release, and definitely tame for a Jallo release. But uh, a fun little film, actually. And probably a, a lesser-known Jallo, and uh, as does John Sorrell. And Tony Kendall as well, by the way. And it is The Fox with a Velvet Tail. So this, I do love the cover for this one right here. And who directed this one? Jose Maria Forquois. So we, again, you get like Autocomptry with Troy Horth on this one here. So sweet, so perverse documentary. And of course, um, original trailers, alternate scenes, newly created English subtitles. Yeah. And this this one is though. This one is region locked. Uh, there's very few that are region locked, and this one's region locked for a reason because. Uh, because 80 films released this one under an alternate title in uh in the UK. Hey there, middle of media. Welcome, man. I watched you one of your videos today. I was a note in a bad video. Yes, <laughs> just so yeah. I am still alive. Or do you mean A-Live? So hopefully, yes. But yeah, i, I got to rewatch this. It's, I haven't seen this one since I first bought it. Mid-Level Media. Are you going to be getting anything from the Monum Cobra sale? I know you usually get your stuff out and about, but this big sale coming on the 29th, a weekend-long sale from Monum Cobra with three brand new limited edition releases. This one is really cool. I know I've said this about all of them. But they are. It's a cool company. They got cool releases. Um, this is a South Korean film. And uh, I think one of the, you know, one of the original, like, horror, South Korean horror films. If you only get three, what's your, are you going for, like, the Blu-ray? Tell you what, at the end, I would de well if you're going for like DVD, then you know, there's Living Corpse, Mystic, Mystics and Valley stuff like that. If you're going for Blu-ray, well, uh, okay, you're about to see, because basically it's going to be choose between the the next ones that I'm going to show you, because I'm going to show you some good stuff. But you, hopefully you'll be able to find stuff you like. So this is Suddenly in the Dark. It is a little known Korean film. Yeah, really different, really weird, kind of like fun, like definitely very psychological. And one that is really insane, like in a good way. Uh, it's got some great interviews on here, uh, including like, uh, it's got this really neat thing called the Korean cover cavalcade, where they do like this, uh, not just your regular steel gallery, but a, a steel gallery of like Korean, like VHS artwork, which is actually really cool. Uh, but, uh, Definitely a different film, and I'll give you, I'll, I'll explain it to you. I'll read this to you. A woman's idyllic middle life, middle life, middle life crisis is disrupted when her husband 
brings home a beautiful young orphan to be their maid. At first she welcomes the pretty girl. In fact, she seems strangely fixated on her, but soon becomes to suspect the girl of having an affair with her husband. At the same time, odd, unexplained incidences, most involving the maid's mysterious wooden doll, begin to make her question her sanity. Soon all spars out of control, and the film climaxes in a fever pitch of sexual jealousy, murder, and supernatural vengeance, all set to a pounding synth score. So there you go. That's your thing. <clears throat> now, next up are two of Lucio Fulci's greatest films uh, that aren't like uh, like beyond stuff like that, but two of his greatest, like, uh, he made really, really good jallos. And here's a couple of them. First off is uh, definitely an earlier one that, uh, that I really enjoyed. And that is Perversion Story. I really love Perversion Story. I watched this movie. I watched all the features. And then I actually, uh, I'm not going to lie, I sat down and watched the movie again. I liked it. So this one here actually has a pretty good cast. We got Gene Sorrell. Marissa Mel is in this one as well. Uh, John Ireland. Uh, Alberto de Mendoza, who, trust me, you've seen him. As soon as you see him on screen, you know who he is right away. But basically, it is about a doctor that is having an affair. Uh, at the uh, beginning of the film, his wife is known for, like, they're not really getting along. Uh, she's sickly. She's, you know, she goes into a room by herself for, like, long periods of time. Um, and he goes off to be with his, uh, with his, his mistress. And while he's gone, his wife dies. And at first, it seems sad. It uh, it seems it seems really kind of tragic, and then what happens basically is we see that uh, oh, he has like a that there's a, a life insurance policy with a million dollar life insurance policy with his name uh, on it. Actually, she is. You're right. Uh, and then the police are very suspicious. Meanwhile, he goes to a local strip club and. Meets a girl there that looks eerily like his wife. Very, very good film. Extremely cool release. And I definitely recommend it. If you like Jallo, get yourself this. You got one of the best things that Lucio Fulci ever did right there with Don't Torture a Duckling. Lizard and a lizard and a woman's skin. Not only does that does it have the amazing we're in the Balkan, but also as Gene Sorrell, Stanley Baker, Anita Strindberg. Uh, yeah, you, you got one hell of a cast there. Sylvia Monti. Uh, it's got some of the best features you're going to see on, on on their releases. Shedding the Skin documentary, Dr. Lucio Fulci's Day for Night, directed by Antonia Antonetti de Lilo. Interview with Stephen Thrower. Interview with actor Tony Adams. Audio commentary with Chris Gavin. Original trailers, radio spots. Uh... Italian English language subtitle choices. Definitely, I, I would agree. Like this is an amazing Jallo, and it is probably one of his best shot Jallos too. It, no dogs were harmed in the making of the film, although we had to prove that because there is kind of a nightmare sequence in here where she walks into a room and these there's these dogs and they're like opened up, and, but they're still alive. Uh, but it actually was just like special effects. It's not like one of those Italian ones where you see them where it's like. It's really yeah to actually go and show them their special effects, but a gorgeous film, an amazing transfer, a great release, and like Jason said, definitely a very very underrated Fulci film. So there you got two Fulci's right there in the middle of me that you can pick up. But let's just say you want to go with a Franco, you want you want some Lena Romay because who doesn't need some le extra Lena Romay in their collection? Well, then, we got you covered. Night has a thousand desires. I love the picture of Leonor Man in front of this. Who was in love with Leonor Man that, that like, watched these Franco films? You kind of had to be. It was, a, it was kind of a thing. Interview with Stephen Thrower. Eurotica documentary on Jess Franco was on here as well. Uh, stars Leonor Man, uh, Daniel Katz. Uh, pretty much the, the, the standard one. It is a surreal, sensuous mystery noir. So there you go. 
Lena Romay plays Arena, a partner in a male-female mind-reading act. This was actually a good one. At night, she experiences a series of sexually charged dreams which end in murder. It seems that the people whose minds she reads are being killed off one by one. No problem. I got a couple more here that may, may tempt you at mid-level, by the way. <laughs> but again, an excellent release. And she does have like amazingly haunting eyes. We can't fall in love with Lena Romay just a little bit. Happy Monday. <laughs> Every day when I, when I get up, I text my kids right away and I say, happy whatever day it is to them to let them know that I'm thinking about them. So this is one of the limited edition releases. It's actually the only limited edition release that I got from them. And ironically, uh, the order, their, their red cases, their normal red cases, and they didn't get them come in. Instead, what was sent to them were PlayStation 3 red cases. So rather than like chunk of the whole money that they did, they just put this limited edition in a PlayStation 3 red case. I'm not joking. That actually really happened. Um, but this is Symptoms. And for those that are just discovering this director, uh, especially since like a lot of his releases have come out, everything from Deadly Manor uh, to, uh, oh God, uh, j just the Jose, Jose Laraz box set. So this is Jose Ramon Laraz. Uh, Symptoms is probably one of his, in, in my thing, one of his best films. It stars Angela Pleasance. Uh, the... Uh, the daughter of uh, of Donald Pleasance and is a very unique, different kind of a kind of thriller. A bit of a slow burn, excellent film. Uh, so there's a documentary on vampires and other symptoms, uh, directed by Celia Novis. Erotica documentary on director Jose Laraz. Interview with editor Brian Smedley Austin. Interview with Angela Pleasance on here. Interview with with Lorna Hellborn Braun. This one was limited to a thousand numbered copies. There, this one has an exclusive second disc here, Laraz on Laraz, which is actually really cool, and an exclusive booklet with an essay by Sam Deegan. And you guys know that I go get anything by Sam Deegan. Your, I like your taste, Samir, because Black Candles is actually a favorite of mine. Oh, then you're gonna like from that. So, a lot of their so mid level when you buy their special releases like their limited editions, they got three new ones coming out. Uh, they. All have these red cases. Well, not PlayStation. These have like a red case, just regular red case. But they'll have like different stuff in it. So this one here had a second disc, like an actual like uh, documentary on here. That's only in this release. But not only that, they also had a great booklet with Sam Deegan. And if you unfamiliar with Sam Deegan, uh, along with like. Uh, She's one of, the, one of the girls that you really got to get familiar with. She's amazing. And this is a great little uh, little writer from Sam. Very cool booklet. Some neat little kind of black and white pictures. Got to make sure. But again, it's a thriller. It uh very interesting. Uh Laraz is one of those directors that has been having a resurgence in the in the in the last year and a half, and that's a really good thing because I think Laraz pretty much was was unappreciated for a longest period of time. Exactly, twenty five dollars for a limited edition release is not bad at all. Uh, like how many releases do we pick up now that are like thirty nine, forty dollars? Like uh, ends up like close closer to forty five, fifty bucks. So I have like uh, like their limited edition release with the uh, with the special case and the booklets and the reverse artwork and that. Yeah, please hit that like button. I actually would really appreciate that because that gets you guys to know when I'm making these videos. And last but not least, here's your last one. Look at Middle Level Media, and the very first Mon Macabre Blu-ray that I ever got was Der Fan, the Fan. What to say about the Fan? It is an utterly fascinating film. And it's one that I got to say kind of stunned me in my better half. I'm just going to read the description. And honestly, it's uh, 
it's unique. Teenager Simone appears to be like any other young pop fan, but soon her fixation on the band's lead singer R takes over her life. She walks out of school, breaks off with her friends and parents, and somehow finds herself waiting for her idol as he appears on a TV show. Simone wants nothing more than to be lo to love and be loved by R. And this says more about the plot on the back. But I'm not going to tell you more. And I don't think you should even read the back when you're looking at this one here. It's a very different film. It's very unusual. Go in blind. Because this has a bit of a shocker of a twist to it. And it has a good twist. Not an out of nowhere twist. But not a twist that really telegraphs itself either. But definitely, will you guys agree that this is definitely like a, not just a, 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 it's a good film. It's a really good film. It's really well done. It's really unique and it's really different. Again, feature-wise on here, interview with the film's writer, director, production notes, English, German, audio uh, choices, optional subtitles, the fantastic Mondo Macabre preview. You buy these on the Mon Macabre website and the Big Cartel. They're going to be having a, a sale in three days. So wait for the sale and you'll be able to get some of this stuff here for uh, for much better prices. As you can see, this one had a all-region DVD and a region-free Blu-ray. So it doesn't matter where you're from, you can actually enjoy the fan. Dare fans. I say I say dare fan because that because there's so many movies called the fan that you got to find a way to like distance it from other movies with the name the fan right because there's so many of them thank you warlock there you go minor macabre at big dot big cartel dot com i'm waiting excitedly for the sale i don't know if i'm going to be able to get anything i'm going to try and suck up to my better half and see if see if i can get something at least maybe one of those limited editions i would like to get lorna of the exorcist i don't have that one not a problem. I'm here for recommendations, man. Anytime. This is a new series called Spotlight. And I will be definitely spotlighting different uh, different companies. And not just different companies. I'll be spotlighting directors. Uh, so if you like this, definitely hit the thumbs up. Let people know. Like, share, subscribe, all that all that jazz stuff. Because the that'll let me know that you want to see more of the Spotlight series. And hopefully you do, because that was a neat little idea that I thought of tonight, and I like it. Actually, I do like it. I like the way it's done. Pat myself on the back. <laughs> exactly. It helps the post links. Put people in the right direction. Massive Arabidos. I'm going to check that out tonight. We're here Heroic. I'm actually... Oh, 20 titles. That's a lot of titles, man. Oh, Josephine, have a fantastic night. Hopefully, I got you to interest in at least one Mondo Macabre. Have a great evening. But Josephine's not the only one that's got to go to sleep soon because I work tomorrow, sadly. And, yep, still doing the work thing. Until I win the lotto. Then, then I'm doing this full time. Thank you, mid-level. That's actually... The feedback I want to know, like I like you, you know, if you like it, if you don't like it, that's uh that's the thing that I need to hear. Cause you never know. It's the thing you make the videos. You want to make sure that that you know it's connecting somehow. And on a Monday night when there's not a lot of people around here, like viewership wise, it's always hard to know till later on if the video connects with an audience. And, and you know, this is pretty much the only way to find out. But there you go, guys. That has been my spotlight of Mono Macabre. On the 29th, when they have their sale, we'll be doing. We'll be going over Modern Carver's sale. We will be looking at the limited edition releases that come out. Manuel, I do want a Manuel in America. That's like high on my list, Jason. I almost got that during an unobstructed view sale a while back. Uh, I was on my short list. It was actually in the cart for a while. But it's it's a release. You know I like a Manuel. George, have a great evening there with your girlfriend, man. Enjoy your films. I'm jealous of your one-on-one films. Uh, 
but guys again 75 minutes for like a that's a, that's a, a decent like length smart like exploitation film i would check this scott atkins youtube channel i got it on my list but i haven't checked it yet i would love to see his like interview with cynthia rothrock though because i'm uh, i'm like me like everybody else who watched that stuff we were in love with cynthia rothrock Blood Spider Bride is your next purchase. Good choice. I am Aaron. This is my movie library. You are the call to cinema. To my Crimson Cult members, my Patreon supporters, thank you so very much. To my Super Chat supporters, thank you. Have a great evening there, and we'll soon be coming down here to talk once again about Mon Macabre during the sale. Have a great night. <laughs>